This is the electrolytic cell lab. Objective number one, to identify all parts of the electrolytic cell, including charges, flow of electrons in the voltaic cell or DC power source that we have here, and of course in the electrolytic cell itself. Objective number two, to determine the experimental mass of metal, in this case copper, that will be collected at one of the electrodes. And also to determine the experimental molarity or concentration of the solution, assuming this reaction goes to completion. And number three, to determine the accuracy of results by using a percent error. And of course, our calculations to determine how many grams of copper should be made okay given the amperage and time that we run the experiment so here are our components we have our DC power source and we have our red lead connected to the cathode of the battery and the black lead connected to the anode of the battery or the power source notice the voltmeter and the more important amp meter that we're going to use throughout the experiment all right now we also need a timer okay which I'll provide in a second but we also are going to use some electrodes okay all I have here is nothing more with a styrofoam okay float that sometimes you see in in biology labs and I'm going to put that right into a 250 milliliter beaker okay and I'm using um, I am using I am I'm using graphite electrodes okay as the electrodes in the electrolytic cell all right and let's turn it this way so that we can clearly see without the uh, numbers and we're going to use a hundred milliliters 100.0 milliliters of copper 2 chloride so I'm going to pour that in here so we're going to use copper 2 chloride we're going to pour that into the beaker and it's got its representative bluish green color because of the copper plus two ions making it complex with the water. And you can see that color, okay, against the white background. We are in a fume hood, so it's important to realize that one of the products of this electrolysis experiment, okay, will be vented out of the room. Okay, now, the first part of this lab is to identify the parts of the electrolytic cell. Where is the oxidation going to be? Where is the reduction going to be? What is the charge of each electrode? What is the flow of electrons? And in the lab that I have linked under the description of the video, you can draw that picture now. You're going to make a decision of where do you want the cathode or the anode to be. So in this video, of course, this is a virtual lab, okay, I'm going to make the red lead from the battery, okay, attached to this electrode and I'm going to attach the black lead from the battery or the power source to this electrode and you probably are going to want to draw your diagram which I have provided in the lab as such and there we have our electrode set up all right and now all we need is our timer and our ability to turn this power source on because as we know electrolytic cells are non-spontaneous the lab doesn't start and doesn't begin until energy is provided for this non-spontaneous process so now we've added our timer and what we're going to do now is turn on the battery we're going to turn on the power source i'm going to try through the video and through our uh, observations try to keep the amperage at one it won't be perfect and we can use the video to get an average of what the amperage is the amperage is going to give us the coulombs per second and the total time of the experiment is going to tell us uh, give us the ability to calculate total coulombs and with faraday's constant we should be able to have moles of electrons and with the half reaction get moles of copper that are it's going to be collected and you should be able to figure out at this point through the diagram where the mass of the copper will collect so we have our timer 
and we're gonna begin in a second, but as we turn on the power source, I'm gonna turn the timer in. It's important to realize we need total time, and we have the, and we need, of course, the average amperage over time, which we can read through the video. And we're gonna to try to keep the amperage around one. It won't be perfect, but it'll be a good estimate as I move this dial back and forth to try to keep this amp meter at approximately one ampere. And remember, amps, of course, are coulombs per second. We can get with the total time, the total number of coulombs with Faraday's constant, we can get total number of electrons responsible for that charge or coulombs. And with the half reaction, we get eventually the moles of copper collected at one of the electrodes that you should be able to predict where it should um, collect based upon how we set up the electrode. So in any case, let's start the experiment. Notice I don't have completely one amp, all right? But I can, again, stop and look back at the video per minute and get an average amperage over the time period.
And now what we're going to do is do a hot filtration and collect all of our copper that was collected at one of the electrodes and dry that out and get our experimental mass. Now we are assuming we've gone to completion. That is a big assumption. But as practice, we're gonna to try to figure out if it did go to completion, what the molarity of the solution is knowing that we used a 100 milliliter solution.